I asked her about her Grand Cherokee. She said it was a base model, so whenever they put it basically in park like this, it stays in park like forward. It doesn't go back like that. So it doesn't go like, like that when it's supposed to be in park. It stays in park rather than going back like that and then saying park. You know, it'd still say park, but it, it doesn't do that anymore. And also, it can't jump into reverse like that, but it can jump into drive. Usually, they don't jump into reverse. And then I asked her about the parking. She said you push a button with your foot on the parking thing. So, so you hit the, 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 the brake on it. So, that's exactly what it did. That, that's a speed, like a speed brake thing, like real quick. So, it would over, it overrides the reverse or drive or whatever as long as that brake is there on the the souped up ones they're from out of town they use that thing right there that's what i need to talk about is that hitch for ship show up dwight east we use a hitch like that little ball ping hitch they call it uh it wasn't like that one that was a modern version of it so they changed it and put it back to the old version of it because if they had any other problems and they would really get in trouble, they, that's when the government gets involved and starts like, hey, you know, you cannot have this with your vehicle. You know, it's it's uh, it's already killed this person and that person. Because it's probably happened to a few pe people. If it tricked one, it could trick another. But, uh, yeah, she said it was uh, something that you hit with your foot for the brake on a Cherokee. I've written about the Cherokee, believe it or not. I wrote about the Cherokee and Trapped in Three. It was a book I was working on in New York in 2000 or 2001. This accident happened in 2016. So the Cherokee I was writing about was in like a 1995 Cherokee or something. I didn't do a lot of research on the Cherokee. It's about a guy that drives in Chicago. He works for a model magazine, you know, like a glamour magazine. And he is in the back roads of, of like Illinois going over a bridge, the, the car flips over majestic style off a bridge and upside down he gets trapped by a seatbelt and eventually eaten by a wolf I worked on it while I was at the actor studio drama school quite a bit I, and I even printed it out I printed it out at nearby Kinko's they had a Kinko's copies down the road between probably Park Avenue and the other way the other direction not towards Broadway but the other way I get that mixed up I have to look on maps and, and stuff and study it but you have Broadway, you have Park Avenue. So I was between Broadway and Park Avenue when I was writing that. I was also supposed to be just an actor. I'd get these little writing bugs and have to start, you know, doing the writing. So I was on, I was at 38 East 21st Street, New York, New York, 10010 or something. I There looked like a, a one night when I looked out my window, it looked like a... a an m and m type shooting a movie i always thought that was um because they did shoot some of eight mile they shot some of it in new york but i don't know anyway i lived there and i would work on it occasionally at night and sometimes when i was finished jogging and stuff and i was kind of bored of just acting for some reason i had to like write but all my journals and stuff like that i kept on the actors when i would go to the interviews they were all kept in a storage unit even in this play I was I was thinking about working on. In the summertime, I was going to do all that stuff. But I had got there 2001 of August and moved into Brooklyn. By the time September 7th or so came, or maybe September 5th or so, I had already moved at 38 East 21st Street, New York, New York, 10010. On the third floor, the official apartment name was 3A3. 3 Apple 3, basically 383. I lived there for pretty much a semester, and then I got into an argument with a guy from Amsterdam that lived across the way. His name was Peter. He was a business major because he was mad I ate his jam. He called it jam. I call it jelly, but he calls it jam. So I grabbed his elbow to talk to him, and then he turned me in, and they moved me to floor five. Basically, if you look at Peter's, mine was 3A3. I don't know what Peter's was. It was two floors up above Flip Peter. Peter would always smell like herb. 
he's always had friend uh, friends over and they were always like listening to Devo or something for Amsterdam he had an accent Chris lived by the elevator David was the guy that was the uh, lighting lighting design he did lighting design for stage he lived next door to me and Staples ended up being a Hollywood stuntman for a few years he, he was my bunk mate until he left went back to Tennessee then he ended up going back to or he ended up going to Hollywood just becoming a stuntman for a while they moved me to five, and it was mostly like accounting majors, really American psycho types. Um, but there was an Asian guy that lived next door to me. He was kind of cool. I was, okay, on, on the fifth level, if you go into the elevator, and you'll say you come out, this is real weird because the elevator looked different on that level. But if you come out of the elevator, and you go straight and to the left, that's where I lived in five. And I lived there until Lipton, James Lipton, called me in his office. And the whole washing machine thing was just something I just was confused. I didn't know what I was, I was, I was scared for September 11th and stuff. So he, he called me in and there was a lady that I had got, well, there was a guy, he was a karate major or he was a guy named Michael. He studied different martial arts he mouthed off to me in theater history and told me to f and listen because i was asking a lot of questions because i couldn't really i wasn't eating right so he said why don't you f and listen and i said don't you say f to me or something like that it was real weird so that was the first one but then my voice teacher moved the times really weird and i was jogging everywhere i didn't want to take the subway so i kind of grabbed her elbow I, didn't, I was grabbing elbows and kind of said well what's going on with the schedule that kind of thing I didn't realize I got kind of Stanley Kowalski so she called me in the office with some other counselor and we all three sat down and she just said well it doesn't you can say this and that but you can't grab elbows basically is what she was saying so that was one warning then the other lady that was at the theater history thing, we were supposed to do an assignment and we were going to do it on like Antonin or Two or something. And I said something about vomiting into a mask. And they actually didn't like me saying that. I don't know why I said it, but I was talking about kind of like a shock theater kind of thing. And that, I thought that was stupid. And then they called me in and they said, okay, this is a second warning. The washing machine incident happened at the 38 21st street apartment or i it was it was in the basement and i asked a lady it was real weird and, I, and she was putting her laundry in there i said well can i use the washing machine or something like that i don't remember exactly what i said she said well this will be free and i said okay so when i went back to look at my clothing there was a little red it looked like lipstick that was in this thing that like stained my turtleneck it literally looked like lipstick i said that B-I-T-C-H. I looked down right over there, and there it was, a big bucket of paint. It was like a cartoon almost. So I grabbed the, the paint bucket, and then I walked over, and I can't remember if this was mine or hers or whatever, and I just poured a little bit in there. And then I went to the third floor. Chris was there, and I was, I was supposed to be at the fifth floor by then. I wasn't doing so hot. And I opened the door and they were all laughing at that moment when I opened the door, they were laughing about something. And Chris looked at me and like, I wasn't really supposed to be on that floor, but I was just kind of like, hey, you know, basically like later, <laughs> like I'm gonna be leaving now. I knew at that point, they, they probably had cameras by the elevator. So I stayed there and stayed there and finished up this class, this class, this class. He let a lot of time go by and I was waiting then I get either like a phone call or something in the mail and it said to meet James Lipton in his office. So, so, well, this is probably the only interview that I'm going to get with James Lipton. So let's go ahead and do it. It was scary because I was thinking like, what are they going to do? How would they possibly know? You know, at the time I was playing a character from Ibsen's ghost named Oswald, who was a painter. So I thought, well, I'll just say it was, you know, method and I was just exploring paint which I kind of was because I used it for me on a monologue like I used the recall which then my teacher said don't use what you do immediately that separates the actor from doing things to make his emotions 
work for him, use stuff that's five years later. That's why Strasburg wanted you to wait five years. So that you weren't using, doing things to make yourself emotional or to make you commit to an emotion and recall or something that just happened. If you follow what I'm saying, that's probably why they did that. So I went in and I talked to Lipton. Lipton had somebody in there and, you know, he talked to me and talked to me, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and then he said, well, listen, we want you to basically go home. We're not expelling that we're suspending. We had a lady that had a similar problem than yours and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. And I said, well, he said, do you need a plane ticket? And I said, no, I can do standby. It's fine. I'll just do it myself. That wasn't the only meeting. Uh, Lipton said, okay, blah, blah. I had kind of smiled in the meeting and Lipton said, that's the coal that we want to see, you know? And he recommended something about a priest and a clown. I don't know the story, but he wanted me to read something about a priest and a clown. It was some story he, he, he recommended. He recommended like a short story or it was like a novella or something. I don't know what it was. Something that like someone like Tolstoy would have written or something. Have you read this? He had said that, you know. He said, well, you can come back. Just go and get some help and then prove to us that you went and got help and then you can come back. You won't have to audition or anything. I've been here for like 20 years since, you know, 2000 and the summer of 2002. So this was happening right before June of 2002. Already gone through September 11th. All that stuff happened. All we went through all the classes and stuff for that year. I had no idea who Bradley Cooper was. I had no clue. And I finally uh, decided I'd get a place in Euless. And... Um, at first, I thought, well, you know, maybe because I've always hang, I was already hanging out at antique theater called Thirteenth Rep, and I knew the lady that ran it, and they were doing show after show. A guy named John was doing shows there. He did he played Jack Kerouac on called um, I believe it was called uh, Last Call. So I thought, well, maybe I should try New York. So I, I I went and got a little room at the Riverview Hotel, which they've changed the name since then. Little tiny room. You could barely open the door and it was a small television and it was like very small. And it was $40 a night. So I stayed there for a few nights. But let me explain what happened is before that, I had another meeting I had to meet with some guy. It was this, it was black dude that had an African accent with this other lady in the room. And it basically went blah, 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 this. And he said, since you are no longer part of the actor studio drama school and the new school university, you will have to move out of basically your dorm room is <laughs> basically what he told me. I had called this guy in word right next door to that place at a, uh, titty bar because he was laughing all night. He used to laugh all night while I was trying to sleep. Finally, I ran down there and I got like right up in his face and used the N word. I should have done that. And I think that's Lipton hated that. He didn't not like, he didn't even like Quentin Tarantino using it. So I had to go probably because of the N word and, um, he didn't condone it. He couldn't cause he was politically correct. He won some Grammy. Oh, no, no, no. He won some, well, he helped he helped people win Grammys, but he won Emmys. That's right. He won Emmys. They're, they're a little politically correct. So finally I moved to the Riverview for like two or three days. And finally they were shooting the 25th hour with Spike Lee was, was filming it there. And there was all these little baggies on the floor and stuff. I don't know if it was for effect. So I, I said, you know what? I could try HMB studio with Uta Hagen. I could try maybe actor studio. I don't know if they would like me, but at least Uta Hagen probably would, which is, I think H and B was right down the road from this little Riverview. Udo Hagen was still alive. And I thought, and I'd walk by it and just look outside of it. I just walked by. Then I did go back to the 13th Rep Theater and I did do Without Consent. It was a play reading. And I thought, well, the, the actors were like this, you know, in town. They were like, look, if you stay here, you're going to have to sleep on park benches every once in a while. Or you're going to have to sleep on the subway every once in a while. You will find places here and there. There will be people that will let you in, but the city will beat you up. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to Euless. <laughs> and I went to Euless, Texas and got an apartment. And I just started writing.